Welcome to TCT Today. Now, here's your host, Julie Nolan. Hi, glad you could join us today. It's going to be a special program. If you have need of prayer in your life, uh, you need healing, and you want to hear somebody else's testimony, you need to stay tuned, call somebody that does, and you're, you'll be blessed today by my guests. Uh, for, on the far end over there is Melanie Walker from the Come On In program and Sessions. And uh, what you, uh, Hi, Melanie. Go ahead. Hi. Well, I tell you what, we're here today. We're going to be taking, taping sessions this afternoon. And just as an added blessing, we have Joel and Labriska Hemphill with us who are going to be singing this afternoon. Yay. But they're going to be sharing so many good things about the power of God and what He can do in our lives. And so we'll probably just let, let you take over. But <laughs> for, for people who don't know, maybe out there, who you are, and I can't imagine there's anybody that doesn't. But just saying, okay, tell them you, you're... Famous musicians, singers. Well, my husband writes a lot of songs okay. and has through the years and has a lot of people that record his songs. And uh, I guess that's our pedigree. My pedigree is that I, uh, my family was the, a Happy Goodman family. Okay. Uh, so I came from a long line of gospel singers. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Julia, 1957, Uncle Howard. Aunt Vestal and Labriska came to Louisiana doing some revivals and tent revivals and happened to come to my dad's church and it was, uh, it just sparked. This is 1957. We just had our 54th wedding anniversary. Wow. So um, we married about six weeks into our courtship and um, so God has been faithful. I we answered. generally don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were both 17. I liked a month being 18. It's been a lot of pitfalls, but we've been happily married for 50 years. Isn't that good? 50 years. <laughs> <No. laughs> <That's not laughs> you know what's so funny is my dad will say the same thing. They've been married 50 something years. And, or is that right, 50? Yeah, 50. 52, something like that. And he goes, Yeah, and 20 of them were good ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's more. They're not watching today. I'm sure. I'm sure, but uh, okay. isn't that funny? That's yeah. funny. But that's so. You did good. If only uh, four were bad. And then we pastored in Louisiana, a small church from 1951 to. I mean, sorry, 1961 to 1971. About 1965, 66, we got dissatisfied with our outreach. Very satisfied with our Lord and and all He was doing in our lives, but. Jesus said the field is the world. TCT knows that. You're taking the gospel to the world. And, and pastoring a small church is a, is a high calling. Thank God for all of our pastors and even pastor small churches. But we began to seek God for a way to reach beyond this small town, not knowing that it would be songwriting. I'd never thought about writing a song in my life. Never, it just, you know. But I got up from prayer one day. Labriska and I were fasting and praying. And not that we earned it or deserved it in any way, but God gives gifts. And I know the day he gave me the gift to write gospel songs. And that's some 400 hundred songs ago. And then he calls people to sing them, you know. Uh, we've had songs like He's Still Working On Me, Consider the Lilies, Master of the Wind. Uh, let's have a revival, uh, I'm in this church, uh, songs like that. We got an email in the office the other day that really blessed me. A lady said, I'm in management. Uh, my mother writes gospel songs, so I know what this would mean to a songwriter. She said, a young Hindu man just stood at my desk and sang, he's still working on me. And said, I, I manage him. And said, I said, how do you know this song? He said, I grew up in India as a Hindu. But he said, my parents sent me to a Catholic school. And he said, every morning, 3,000 kids in this Catholic school started the day with, <laughs> with he's still working on me. Can you believe that? Uh, and so anyway, he, she said, this song is firmly rooted in his spirit. So I trust it'll be a means of helping him come to the Lord Jesus Christ, but he sang that song to her, and uh, just a young man from... You know, Joel, isn't it amazing at the faithfulness of God? Amen. And I am always amazed at how faithful that he is, 
that there's no way that, I mean, you couldn't sit down and get a plan and say, okay, by, in two months, we're going to get this to India, and in six months, we're going to get it into every school over there, and this Catholic school, and these people are going to be That's touched. Right. You couldn't have done that. Do it. When, when the Word says that He does abundantly more yes. than what we can think or imagine, He does, yeah. doesn't He? So he used these songs to broaden our platform, and we've been on TCT many times. We love this network. We enjoy you when we're home in Nashville, you and Melanie, and uh, we're blessed by it. Um, Thank you. Thank God for this network. But uh, anyway, God broadened our platform, and uh, we gave up our church in 1971. 72, we moved to Nashville, and that's, we've made our home there ever since. So we've traveled, and God's blessed us to minister in, in many places, South Africa, Israel, Egypt, uh, all over Europe, uh, Germany, you know, uh, Austria, different places, Canada, Mexico, and so to God be the glory. We've had a good time, and uh, here, we are. Are. Uh, here we, we are. We still are. We still are having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still like one another. Isn't that good? It's just Amazing. <laughs> amazing. Now, I want to remind you, call the number on the screen for prayer, 800-232-9855. Joel and the Breeze are going to pray for you. And they're going to be talking about healing and prayer in a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more about them, getting to know them first. Okay. So you write books, too. So tell us about... Well, well let's do the nice books last. So we'll leave them with it. <laughs> Your books, Joel, make people think. Yes. Yeah. And hopefully it cause them to, to look in the scripture and see what uh, we've missed. Because there's so many things that we get from our tradition. There's so much of our theology that we get from uh, our songs. And I love our gospel songs. But sweet hour of <clears throat> prayer has been converted to just a little talk with Jesus. I mean, okay, but, you know, we, we get a lot of what we believe. We just hear it in a song, and we say that it has to be right. I heard it in a song, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, this, this Bible is our authority for what we believe, and so I, I didn't realize all that I had missed. But in 1986, Labriska and I ran aground. This, this is the dark part of the story. I, it's been a great uh, 54 years. But after 29 years of marriage, we ran aground, and I did spiritually, and it was very devastating to our marriage and our ministry, and I thought it was over. And I'm going to be very transparent here. I told Labriska, I said, the world's just going to have to take another look at Joel Hemphill. I'm not who I thought I was. I'm not, I'm not who they thought I was. But God's about restoration. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a restoration God. And the good news is he came on the scene and spoke in an awesome way. And he said, I'm not angry with you. I love you. I've called you to this ministry, and I expect you to fulfill it. So he walked me out of it a step at a time. He said, I'm not going to sh only show you the way back, but I'm going to show you the way beyond. And he made a lot of wonderful promises to us. And so out of this, this is what he said to me. Study the scripture because I'm going to reveal myself to you in my word. I had clearly seen the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved when I was 10 years old. And I am a minister of Jesus Christ. I love the Lord Jesus. I praise him. I write Jesus song. But I had overlooked his father. Jesus always pointed us to the Father. So God told me you will write books about my glory. And, and there is a distinction in Scripture between the glory of our Lord Jesus, which is awesome glory. The brightness of Jesus' glory will destroy the Antichrist at his coming. When Jesus comes, his brightness, the Bible says, Second Thessalonians, will destroy the Antichrist. But over and over, Jesus referred to it as his own glory. You'll see me sit in the throne of my glory. He said to the Father in John 17, Father, the glory you gave me. But glory in the New Testament is doxa, D-O-X-A, and it means to, to recognize a person for who they are and give them the glory of that position. John said Jesus' glory... Uh, John 1, 14, is the glory of the only begotten of the Father. But it's a given glory. 
God the Father's glory is an innate glory, self-consistent glory. Nobody gave the Father his glory. He's the creator God. So uh, anyway, I, I waited 19 years and prayed and studied everything I could find on the glory of God. But the Lord began to open some very wonderful and important things to me in Scripture. So now I've written four books on the glory of God. My first book is a 390-page book called To God Be the Glory. So we need to give the Father his dues, if we can use that word, and give our Lord Jesus his dues. Sometime in our theology, we make Jesus the creator. Jesus never claimed to be the creator. His awesome part in creation is that he redeemed it all by his sinless blood on the cross. But Jesus never claimed to be the creator. He said, when the divorce question came up, Jesus said, he who made them at the beginning. When it came up again, he said, God who made them at the beginning. In Mark uh, 13, Jesus said at the time of the end, and I think that's getting close, he said there would be t a time of trouble like was not since the beginning of creation, which God created. So, hey, it's like the scales fell from my eyes. I saw our awesome God, our Father, our Creator. Jesus spoke far more about the Father than he did any other subject. More than he spoke of heaven, hell, money, marriage, divorce, anything else. He mentioned the Father 170 times. He says in John 14, 28, my Father is greater than I. He said in Matthew 24, he's about to leave. He said, I don't know when I'm coming back. My Father knows. When the precious lady brought her two sons and wanted one on his right and one on his left in his own kingdom, he said, that is not mine to give. It will be decided by my father. So anyway, I write a lot of books about God the Father because he has a face. Jesus said in Matthew 18.10, the angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven. Then the good news is, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8, they were looking at him and blessed to see him. That'll be a glory day for Melanie and Joel and Briska and Julie. But he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 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 Hello? That's right. And in Revelation 21, it says, God himself shall be with them mm -hmm. and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So Paul made it. Well, let me, I'll just sum it up with this. I was going to say, now they're not going to buy the book. You just got the whole thing summed up for you. He's full, Jew. Oh, I he love to hear this stuff. He is full. Stuff. But Paul made it real easy for us in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Now, this won't make you popular, but it'll make you biblical. He says, I would have you to know that the head of every woman is the man, the head of every man is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. God. We dare not forget the Father, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's who Jesus prayed to. That's who he taught us to pray to. You know, Joe, I, I think about when, you know, Jesus, the miracles were done. Oh, yeah. They were done so the Father would be glorified. That is it. You know, we, we, we focus so much on what God's going to give us and pray for what we want. We pray for our miracles, which God, I mean, has given you miracles, and we're going to pray for those miracles today. But part of the reason Jesus said those miracles exist is that the Father would be glorified yes. through the Son. When people were healed, they would leap and praise God. They would go off and leap and praise God when Jesus healed them. That's right, because it mm -hmm. was gifts from the Father. See, James said every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father. It comes through. They come through our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I wouldn't dare approach God in my righteousness. I don't have any. Mm -hmm. But I approach Him in the righteousness of His supernaturally conceived, virgin-born, sinless Son, our Savior, Redeemer, Messiah, intercessor, hero, champion, the future ruler of this world for 1,000 years. But Paul says in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, when that ends, then Christ shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, and then shall the Son himself be subject to the Father, that God may be all in all. 
So we're just trying to help people get a, get a little better view of, of God our Father. You know, the Bible's very clear on these things, and we've, uh, like I say, we've gotten a lot of our, our theology from our tradition and our songs and what uh -huh. Grandma said. Thank God for Grandma, but <laughs> what does the white Word of God say, you know? Well, I've, you know, there, there's things I've read in it that uh, I, I thought were different because of what I was taught in church growing up. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really say that. People, are, I think, try to explain the Bible and explain it by using our, our reasoning, and sometimes it's not in there. And it, I mean, they're, at least they're talking about it and they're trying. God knows we're, you know, we make mistakes yes. and don't get things right, and He doesn't seem to mind that too much. Yes. I, I, I kind of notice that. Like, we get mad at each other because, well, you don't believe what I believe, and that's wrong. And, but we care a whole lot more than God does. I, I personally think so. Yeah. But. And any revelation we have, you know, it's, the Spirit of God has had to give us that revelation, right. and we're all in, we're in different places of growth. And aren't we supposed to work out our own salvation? With fear, with and, fear and trembling. That's right. And there not, is I'm not no supposed to work out yours because you have it wrong. There right. you go. There Even though I want to, I oh, want to no. tell Melanie how to oh, do no, it. No. But, you know. uh, we, we I wish you could. <laughs> we only talk <laughs> about this, Julie, right. when people ask us to, but yeah. thank you for asking because yeah. it's an important part of what we do. We're evangelists, we're encouragers, we go here, we go places and sing and evangelize and don't mention my books because they're theological studies. And it's up to a pastor to teach his people what he sees. But I certainly do address it with everybody that wants to talk about it because it's very important. There is no salvation outside of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said in John 14, 6, no man cometh to the Father but by me. And nobody's authorized any of us to disagree with Jesus, right? I mean, he, he spoke the words of God. He said, Father, the words you gave me, I gave them. But the amazing thing is that everything Jesus had was gifts to him. They were gifts to him from the Father. When he prayed in John 17, he said, Father, I thank you for those that you have given me. Mm -hmm. So his followers were gifts to him from the Father. He, said I, he didn't lose any that he was given to take care of except the one. That's right. right. That is true. And, that, and Judas, that was yeah. the plan, I guess. I the know. healings that God Jesus knew. had, his, men, his very ministry. He said, as the Father has life in himself, so he has given the Son to have life in himself. So Jesus' very life derived from the Father. You know, his words, his miracles, all were gifts to him from the Father. And so, and they're gifts to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we approach the Father in Jesus' name. And isn't that amazing, though, as I sit here and listen to you talk, that, that God gave Christ all that he had. Yes. And then he gave us Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, isn't that powerful? Isn't that wonderful. <laughs> isn't that powerful that he wonderful. gave us Christ? So we could see the Father. Yes, yes. And can receive from the Father all that Christ received. Amen. Well, Jesus said an awesome thing in, in uh, John 17. That prayer to the Father, Jesus summing up his ministry in prayer to the Father. All of us should go back and read that again. Because Jesus said, Father, the glory you gave me, I gave them. Yeah. So his glory is of being so the we could Son do greater of God. Things because As of he him. said, I go to the Father. But also, here's, here's an amazing thing. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Jesus said, Father, you love them. He didn't just pray for his disciples. He prayed in that 17th chapter, I think it's verse 21. He says, I'm praying for all of those who will believe on me through their words. So he knew they would write it down, that we would believe it. TCT would help spread it. There would be believers out there. So Jesus prayed all, for all the believers who would believe on him through their word. But in verse 23, he says, Father. Huh? Where is that one? John 17, 21. John you, it's hard to get a hold of that one, but he, he said it. I don't remember that. Yeah. Uh, he says, they believe on me through their words. And then he says, he says, Father, um, you love me just like you love them. And that's another one that's hard to get a hold of. Uh, 
No, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Mm -hmm. So Jesus included us in that prayer. The next verse is wonderful too. Yes. That they all may be one, at, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe. See, when Jesus said, I and my Father, one, he's not talking about one person. Because mm -hmm. he says twice in this prayer that they may, may be one just as we're one. Not one person. One in unity, fellowship, love. Oh, do you write about all that too? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. We're not going to go there today, okay? <laughs> no. Well, let's don't go there, but I want you to see this. He said, I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Julia, when I saw that a few weeks ago, I had a hard time getting a hold of that, that God loves us just as he loves Christ. Jesus said it. He said, Father, you love them just like you love me. Now, we know how much the Father loves His only begotten Son. He put a star out over Bethlehem to say it's a boy. You know, He spoke at His water baptism. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. But Jesus turned around and said, Father, you love them just like you love me. If we could just pe get people to grasp how much God loves us, then it's easier to believe Him for these healings that we need, these miracles, these broken family relationships. All that. Peter was talking about our Creator when he said, Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares. cares. The God that spoke the universe <laughs> into existence out of nothing. You should go back to preaching. He is. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I, we're going to have a time, and I promise that we'll talk about the, the healing because you've had healing ministries. You're going to come back. Labrie's got just uh, tell them the, the names of your books real fast. Oh, uh, Partners in Emotion okay. and My Daddy Played the Guitar. Okay. And they're not near so deep. <laughs> they're very encouraging. They're inspirational oh. books. They're, they're about our life and where we came from and what God has done for us. And, and they're going to be on sessions. They're going to tape that show today, and you'll be able to see that in a few weeks, and we'll let you know. But uh, it, it, you, you've been here about a year ago, about you know, September, and uh, you've had, it wasn't so good. So Julie, here, we so. had all these dates booked, and we're out there <laughs> traveling and having a wonderful time. And... Um, then the doctor says you have bladder cancer. I had cancer in 1990, colon cancer. I've been on TCT and shared that I did not handle it well. I went into two years of severe clinical depression. Labriska took me to get my hair cuts like a child, 91, 92. And God healed me in church one Sunday morning. Our pastor, Brother Nolan, got up and said, Brother Hemp, he'll come up here God said he's going to heal you today. And they'd prayed for me a lot, but God healed me that day. So, but I felt like I failed that test because I went, I went on, you know, my, my test of cancer. So God let me take it again. And I had cancer again in September. And I had uh, five, I uh, had eight chemo treatments and three surgeries. And I had, we had to cancel everything we were doing from September till New Year's and thank God we're back in the flow and I'm cancer free and I got to keep my bladder but that was in the balance you know we, we but let me tell you what held me through this other than Briska and all the prayers of the wonderful people Jesus said in John 15 1 I am the vine the true vine mm -hmm. my father is the husband and if a branch bears fruit, my Father prunes it or purges it that it might bring forth more fruit. So God helped me understand that a lot of our suffering, the rough places, Melanie was talking about it this morning mm -hmm. as we were dressing, we learned that a lot of these things we suffer, it's a pruning. It's about more fruit. See, there's no shortcut to compassion. You cannot, compassion is my pain in your heart or your pain in my heart. That's compassion. Mm -hmm. You can't have that unless you've suffered. 
See, I used to see my precious old preacher dad, and he could weep, weep over a child he read about in the paper that had been molested or something. He'd just sit there and weep over it. I wanted that, but I didn't know how you, how you reached it. Our Lord Jesus suffered, and he learned, the Bible said, through what he suffered. We just, Julie and I were just talking today about somebody who's going through something similar that my husband and I have been through. And as, she, as soon as she spoke that out, you know, my heart went, I want to pray with those people because I know that I know that I know what they're going through. And uh, the Bible tells us to comfort others with what we've been comforted with. And there is nothing that replaces having been where somebody is. Nothing that replaces right. that. You know, you want to empathize. But compassion, our personal compassion for others, only comes through our own suffering. But I believe God is purging us all. He's purging His church so we can have the power and the unity and the fellowship and the favor with God. Luke 2.52 says Jesus grew in favor with God. And we need more favor with God. And as we love Him, as we worship Him, as we go through these He's molding the clay. And, and you know what molds clay? Pressure. We don't like pressure. I talked about this in the church yesterday. <laughs> the very thing. Yeah. Yes, but he's good and he loves us. That's the good news. The Father, our Creator, loves us. So I didn't go into depression. I didn't fall apart. You know, I didn't have to have antidepressant medications or Bruce could take me to get my hair cuts like she did in 91, 92. I feel like I did a better job of passing this test and I'm cancer free, thank God. I have to go every three months and be checked, but uh, three surgeries, eight chemos, and lots of prayers later. He still has his bladder. Yeah, I'm <laughs> cancer free, praise God. That is awesome. Well, before we leave today, well, we want you to pray. We're just uh, less than two minutes. We want you to pray for people out there, just whatever they're going through. Uh, some, uh, a lot of things you've been through, they're dealing with. We see it every day in the emails and the prayer requests we get. Uh, so, And we'll keep praying. Of course, we always do. And the number's on the screen, 800-232-9855. But go ahead. Amen. Uh, uh, let me just say this, that... that uh, God said to Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Amen. And so God knows you. He loves you. You're his. You're very special to him. And so uh, just hold on to that fact that you're unique to God. You're, he has plans for you that you couldn't even imagine. But just hold steady, whatever you're going through. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us. And we just stop right now to glorify you and worship you as our creator God. And we thank you for your love that you have given us, Father, uh, our, our undeserved love, but love that we thank you for today. Father, I pray for those out there that might be watching today who are hurting, family situations, marital problems, Father, physical problems. I ask you to minister healing. You said to Israel, I am the Lord that healeth thee, and we claim that for your people today. Isaiah 53, 5 said of our Lord Jesus, he was wounded for our transgression. He was